on the August 21st, 2023, uh, regular meeting of the Kent Local Board of Education. <coughs> Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> No, we do not know. We'll, we'll start the school reports up in September when we get back in session. Oh. Okay. That brings us to the superintendent's report. Yep, so just communication. 
is obviously getting soon in the month where we we'll get those kicked off. I think the first time kids will be in with us, I think, is that October meeting uh, because we'll have our September and October then, and we'll keep we'll keep rolling from there. Um, as far as athletic council, just want to let you know, on July 27th, uh, Mr. Moore, Mr. Dennison, and myself had a meeting with all of our athletic coaches, um, mainly to go over expectations and just make sure that we were all on the same page. Uh, a lot of the topics covered were things such as supervision, social media usage, uh, setting expectations. And we have great coaches. We have a lot of people that are very dedicated to taking care of our students. But I thought it was important for us to get together at the beginning of the year and really make sure we just outlined what those expectations were. Very good meetings, some very good questions from our staff. Really, really appreciated that. Also along the lines of athletics, just so you know, off to a great start with our fall sports here with everything. Um, we had, um, I, I, if you've been following along, our girls golf team right now is doing amazing. We've already set school records. We have record boards that are, man, they should be in any moment that we are gonna line that back hallway there. Uh, so people when they come to athletic events can walk down and see them. And also, so our kids when they're down there can look and see and have something to shoot for. Um, as uh, Coach Mullet said to us, I hope you, those are changeable and they are so we can get them reserve break and as we go. Girls tennis team right now started off the year again undefeated. I think we're going to be really in a good spot there. Um, uh, obviously, if you were there Friday night, what a way to kick off the season. And uh, I was giving Mr. White credit because, you know, we think of Landon, his grandson, as a soccer player. But man, oh man, he made that tackle at the, at the second half. Uh, or excuse me, at the end of the first half. It was awesome. But kicking off this week, cross country this Saturday, he's got their first race. Uh, we're really excited, particularly our boys team there. I think we have a lot of depth and can do some neat things. Uh, soccer really gets into full swing this week here. I know middle school, you guys are tonight, correct? That's what I'm thinking. And then we have varsity soccer. Girls soccer already kicked off the year with a one nothing win over Simi Valley. Um, and so it is, it's, it's a lot of things going on. Boys golf uh, has, has been playing very well, have a very neat team there. So again, just a lot of excitement there with everything. On facilities, I just want to take a moment to publicly say how thankful we are to our custodial staff, our maintenance staff for the work. I mean, when you walk around and look, we're going to get some cleaning this morning because we had a bunch of people in here for, uh, Nate, I would say this even if you weren't here, buddy, just so you know, okay? I'm not just blowing smoke at you, but just a really, really, and when you walk into Faircrest, the building shines. I mean, I, I'm, when you walk in, it just, and that doesn't happen by accident. And these new buildings here, if you guys get a chance, walk around, um, and really for anybody, like, Jeff Moore's got up signs down there now, kind of reflecting a little bit of who our values are, and we want more and more of that for our kids. Uh, curriculum and programming. As you guys know, we approved, we have the new math curriculum coming in, um, and that's going right now, honestly, uh, K through nine, grade nine. It will go K to 12 in the next year, but our 10th and 11th and 12th grade, uh, if they can one year or more of an implementation, but ninth grade algebra we're getting started with it this year, ready to go. Um, we had some really good trainings that took place on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week where people came in. Um, I'm going to mention in our convocation day speech, I know that's not how everybody loves to start off the years with maybe Dr. Noll, I don't know you, but with some curricular training, but it was awesome. And we got a lot of really good feedback from, from, our, uh, from our staff and from our presenters that were here, the questions our staff was asking. So we are excited to get that implemented. Um, there was also some CKLA training because, again, we started out with CKLA, or excuse me, Campify training with CKLA K-5 to last year. We're carrying it over grade 6 through 8 right now, and we had some training for that. So a lot of excitement in that area as well. Um, and then as you move down to my superintendent update, what I want to take you through real quick is the mental health and wellness funds that we receive. Um, every single year, we get a set of money from the state that has to be set aside for the physical and mental health of our students. And Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're $270,000 that we're receiving from the state this year. Mental health and That's an estimate because oh. once the um, funding formula is updated, we'll get an exact number, but it's expected to be right around 270000 So at this point, it's an estimate, but should be pretty close to that. I hope, Jason, to that, so to that. But <laughs> what we do, and just so you guys know and everybody knows how we spend that money, because it has to be set aside, that is where right now we use, we have outstanding school nurses. We have Lori Serafini that is right here, our employee with us, she's here in the high school. We also then have a contract with Akron Children's Hospital to be able to staff our middle school and our elementary school with school nurses. Uh, they have been wonderful.
wonderful. Uh, I, I think if you talk to our, our building administrators and our secretaries, last year was as good as it's been in a long time with our nursing situation. And a big chunk of that money, or excuse me, we're, we're able to cover it with the money coming from that student health and wellness. The second thing with that is our mental health that we have. And I sat at the July board meeting last year and told you how excited I was for the mental health services we had in place. Quickly, within a week after I told you that, it all fell to pieces. So I'm not going to talk about how excited I am about this. But what I am going to tell you is, and again, it comes out of this in here. We do currently have a full-time counselor coming in from Conquest at our elementary school. We have a full-time counselor at our middle school right now, again, out of Conquest. And then at the high school, we've been able to contract with Hope Behavioral Services. And they are going to be in here for four days a week. And then on top of that, we're going to ask them to approve it, approve it here today. Uh, Dr. Tim King, we are partnering with Louisville and with Sandy Valley for him to provide services, particularly to our students who are going to be attending West Campus. So again, um, I'm not going to jinx myself like I did last year because it was a total jinx. But uh, right now, we feel like we are on the right track with where we are with those for the mental health service of our kids, which we all know how important that is. And again, that money is also coming out of the mental health and wellness money that's coming to us. When things get solidified of exactly how much is going to be there, we're going to post this up on our district website because it needs to be available for our community to see as well of how we're spending that money. So that's what I have for my superintendent's report. Um, any questions for me on that? You know, I do have a question. Yeah. Can, can you give us an update on where we sit with the wide property yeah, as far absolutely. as the tennis courts and all yeah. that? So, over the summer, and this is again part of the work that our maintenance crew did, and even though we hired, you know, um, six of our employees to do some work, and they did, if you were out there at the football game the other night and had a chance to see the, the tower uh, that they built for the timing shed, we joke, I don't know, you know, we give them the stair suites is I think where we had it last, last there with everything, but we built that building, I know this is not what you asked, Scott, but just to tie into it, we built that building for basically about the $6,000 material and the labor cost. Um, again, now I got these numbers from Chris Knoll, so if they're wrong, I blame him. Um, but he talked to the maintenance person at Louisville, and they built a similar shed. Cost them about $30,000. So we were able to get some really quality work done, and again, I really appreciate this for what I think is a really good value to our taxpayer. One of the other things that they did as well was the Y property over there, the renovations of it, they have now turned the former Bridgepoint building into, it's a locker room facility for tenant that boys and girls will be able to use eventually. Um, it also has some storage built in over there because some of our youth teams use that facility. And then the other thing is we're really excited about this. For the first time ever, we're going to have an indoor, I don't want to say this, golf, not really facility, but a place for our kids to be able to go and practice and to be able to do some work over there in the summer. Um, we're going to work through with our golf team. They have raised money so to get some things in there that they need. So, and Jeremy, you did a lot of the work over there. I, I, am I leaving anything out? Uh, no, no, it was a lot better. Yeah. And if at any point in time you want to go over and see that, please just let me know. I'll get you hooked up with, with Chris or myself, or we'll get you over that way to see it, okay? But yeah. So, so what's the timing of getting the tennis courts over there? Okay, so if you remember, last year we went out and we got quotes, and it came in at right around a million dollars for those tennis courts. Um, we are eventually going to have to completely redo all of the courts, and we're thinking that alone is going to be between six and seven hundred thousand dollars. And that's just the surface area over there, and that will be used out of permanent improvement money. So what our thoughts were: if we're going to have to do that anyways, let's move it over there, open up that facility with the new middle school, or open up that area with the new middle school to be able to have more parking, have stick. And we don't have an unsafe parent pickup or drop off, so I don't want to give that impression. But it would just give more room, be able to spread everything out. When the price tag came in at a million dollars, we pumped the brakes a little bit. We have applied for a grant. Governor DeWine put into the budget $200 million into the budget to expand career tech. We have applied for the grant um, that if we get it, we would be building an HVAC facility down there to provide HVAC training to our students. Part of what we built into the grant was the clearing of the property, which would involve removing those tennis courts to be able to do so. If that happens, that's going to save us, and Jason, if I'm wrong, we're estimating about two hundred to 300000 Yeah, for the tear out of the old return of the parking, yeah. Which we knew, so then we're back down to about that figure that we thought. At that point, then we're going to re-bid it. One of the things we were told when we get, were accepted the bid coming back 
back in was we were trying to do this over the summer, which was the busiest time. We might get a cheaper rate if we did in the fall. That's a might. But if we get this grant, we're going to rebid it out and go from there. If we do not, we're going to hold steady with where we are right now, <coughs> continue to monitor. We may send out a rebid again later on in the year just to see where we are with tennis courts. We do have intentions of moving them over. Um, but it would make it a lot more feasible right now if we could do it in conjunction with getting the grant to stay in career tech and getting part of that site work over there paid for. Um, and that would, we're hopeful they've told us we're gonna get announced the first phase of winter anywhere between August and September. So it could be any time. So the, I mean, best case scenario is we could start working on it like next summer? I think best case scenario is we win, we win it, or the grant, um, we start bidding out and my gosh. We would start probably working on the new tennis courts first to yeah. get that bid out because we want to make yeah. sure that there's a seamless transition. Yeah. We don't have a time where we don't have tennis courts available. And then probably next year when we would start working on site work for the HVAC. Yep. Okay. And again, facility. tied in with that, just so everybody knows, tied in with that grant, tied in with that grant, it's not just us with HVAC, but it's over at East Canton with electrical trades, which again serves all of our kids. And at that point in time, you'd be looking at 50 more spots in the Career Tech Academy for juniors and 50 more spots for seniors in lab hands-on trades-based programs, which we're really excited about if that can happen. So I want to knock on wood and hope that that comes through. Brett, would we keep the walking track then? Would that be able to stay yep, once Yep, absolutely. That, that will have no impact on the walking track over there at, at all. The walking track will absolutely stay. It's all, it will be all in front of the bridge point going in, kind of on top of the old pool is the way that where everything would be. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, that brings us to the superintendent's report. Yep, all right. So, hey, we start off with some resignations. First of all, Nicole Urban, uh, very excited for her. She accepted a first grade job at Maslin City Schools. It was a last minute thing there, but really excited for her. Uh, Pat Boone is going to resign as a bus driver. Uh, wrote us a very, very nice letter. Very grateful for the work Pat's done for us. And then Sharon Williams is going to resign her monitor spot. If you saw uh, a little later, we are uh, looking to approve her as one of our permanent subs, but she needed to do that. And so I do recommend that we would uh, approve those. As we move down through employment here, I'm not going to read every single name because if I do, we would be here for a really, really long time. Um, if one of the things, if you look at there with our fall workers, uh, just one of the things I want to clarify, the only people that need to be approved as fall game workers are people that are not already employed by the school. So, for example, Lisa Hookway that would pay tickets for us, we can pay her the $25 per game to do that. She's already employed. These are people that are not already our employees. We need to get our authorization to be able to pay them for their work at our games. Uh, Jack Edwards, Dean of Students, Kent South High School, placing on step seven. Uh, we do have ESSER money for one more year to cover the position of Dean of Students. And we thought that this was very vital to making sure we provide the safest and best environment for our students uh, for another year. So we'd like to approve Jack Edwards. Jack has retired from uh, Dover, where he's been an administrator at Dover Indian Valley. He spent eight years as an assistant principal at Dover High School. In the last, don't quote me on the number of years, I'm not going to say it, but the last several years as the middle school principal there. Had a great chance to meet Jack. We're really excited to have him. He cannot officially start with us until September 1st. So that means these first four days this week and the four days next week, he will not be able to be with us. Uh, we are going to appoint him, though, on the, uh, the Dean of Students contract, which is 205, because we are going to use Jack to be at events, cover and uh, do things to be here as well. And so he's going to work those 205 days, just so you're, you're aware of that. But we're excited to be able to add someone of his experience. As you go down through the rest of the list, just a couple things to point out there. You will see uh, some new paraprofessionals, monitors. That has happened, that bumping has happened. This is a busy time of year with, with hiring. All of our permanent subs, they are all being hired again with ESSER funds. And this is our last year for ESSER funds. And each one of them had the option to take one of two things, either $175 a day in pay with no insurance or $150 a day with insurance. Uh, many of them are under the age of 26 or, or have other insurance through a spouse, and so they opted to take that. In the long run, that is cheaper for the district if that happens and better
better for, for the employee. Um, but so just if you were looking on there and you're looking at, hey, why is that something there? It was an option given to the employees and, and we were just looking for the best ways to take care of them, but also uh, be fiscally responsible with the money we have in ESSER. Um, and then other than that, it's really just filling in positions that we lost. One last thing I would like to mention is you did add back in, and it's always been in the contract book, but that athletic director stipend Craig Leeser at the middle school. The reason for that, just so you know, is as we moved Adam Hall down there to the middle school as assistant principal, um, he is a head coach in the, in the winter, and uh, that's gonna require him to do things after. So his number one job is to be our middle school assistant principal, but in the afternoons and evenings, he's gonna have some things he needs to go do. We wanted to make sure we had some support for Mr. Mon and everybody down there, that's why I see that. So it is my recommendation that we would employ everyone on that list uh, on item B. Gifts and donations, we had an anonymous donation to the 6 p.m. mentoring of $300. Obviously, gratefully like to recommend those. Federal grants and programs, uh, this is our allotment of money that we have received uh, this year, and you can look through and see Title I-A, Title I-B, uh, Title I-4A, uh, I IDEA, our Perkins Career Tech, our Title IIA, uh, the money that we are receiving from the state, and I wanna see how grateful I am to Patricia, to Dale, to uh, Victoria. Obviously, Jason, I, need, I can't leave Chris that out of there. They really do an awesome job of making sure we're getting the money that we need and then making sure that it, they work with Jason to make sure that it is being spent on the things that it needs to be spent on. Um, we have added an extra title tutor this year with this money at the uh, elementary school um, to try to provide more intensive support. We have also added um, this year, we took away from some teacher professional development and added in an instructional coach at the middle school because we believe that would be a more intensive uh, professional development, really on a daily basis instead of some big one day sit and gifts with our staff. So I'd like to, us to recommend that we uh, accept those and are authorized to participate in that as well. Uh, e, the state grants. This is our early childhood. We did receive this award of $255,000, and this is what allows us to work with and pay for, uh, obviously, our preschool, which, again, we are filled. Uh, we have three-year-olds on the wait list, uh, and we are excited about that. Um, and Victoria and her staff are doing an amazing job with that as well. Uh, obviously, I'd like to recommend that we approve that. I don't have approval of bus routes for the 2023-2024 school year. Crystal, uh, Joyce, Sarah, the work they do, get those together. It is, uh, boy, especially you read the news recently as well, like Louisville, Kentucky, and some other places. Uh, I recommend that we accept those. Our school resource officer, their grant, um, this is something that I, I, we are very blessed in Star County to have our partnership with the Sheriff Department that we have. Deputy Hewitt, thanks for waving to everybody. Deputy Usley, that, that we have. Um, listen, guys, I did $173,000 is the maximum that we will pay, but that's our authorization to do that. But to have two sheriff officers here, the way that they are serving our community, serving our kids, I think this is money well invested. Uh, I recommend that we accept that. Item H, payment in lieu of district transportation. As you know, each year we uh, sometimes it is just not possible to transport a student or parents, we work out it, it's more convenient for the parent, for them to be able to transport a student to maybe a different place or a different school. Um, and this is for uh, some students to be able to go to a uh, school in Akron and the, to the Star County Learning Center that will pay the IRS mileage rate for miles driven per day to transport these students. And I would like to recommend that we uh, approve that payment in lieu of. The next couple are for the facility uses. Uh, to use the football stadium and soccer stadium out there, um, Matt Trissel uh, is requesting that the Kent South Youth Football Organization be able to use it on September 9th. They meet the criteria we set forth for our uh, school youths to use it. We'd like to uh, approve that. Um, also then, uh, Matt Dennison has requested it. This is pretty cool. This Thursday night, uh, we have two uh, colleges, Marietta and Westminster, would like to meet here. We'll see here for both of them. Uh, they'd like to use our facilities. Uh, they're gonna pay a $250 rental fee, but what a cool opportunity for our kids if they wanna go to a free college football scrimmage, see college football up close. Uh, we'd like to let them use our facilities here on Thursday night to be able to do that. Uh, Sunday participation, something that we did last year, carrying over again this year. I, as a parent of a cheerleader, I can tell you
tell you, you don't always know when the schedule is, is going to be and when things are going to happen. Um, so we would like to authorize our cheerleaders to participate in up to seven Sunday competitions. Uh, that way, if an event gets changed or gets added, we're not having to come back to you for retroactive approval. So no more than seven, um, if there would be something like that. But I already know the state competition is on a Sunday. There's several other competitions that are already scheduled for a Sunday. We'd like to grant them that authorization to do so on that. Substitute bus driver pay. Um, talking with Chris Noel, as we are, it's like many other places, constantly struggling to find substitute bus drivers. One of the things we'd like to do to incentivize that is move our substitute bus driver rate from $17 an hour to $18.88. That is the same as what we start our first year bus drivers, but we think it's a necessity to try to continually attract more and more sub bus drivers at this point in time. Uh, so I'd like to ask your authorization to uh, uh, move that pay. Uh, our shared service agreement here, talked about this one a little bit earlier with Dr. Tim King. Uh, we share him with Sandy Valley and we share him with Louisville. We split the cost of his insurance and uh, we then pay a set fee and I believe, um, and, it, and it's in there, it, it's very close to $30,000, but that is up to 294 hours, or excuse me, 296 hours of work. Dr. Tim King is going to be stationed with us one day a week over at West Campus, working with our students individually, working with our student group, helping to meet mental health needs, helping to build those skills. He'll also be available for us if we need, uh, if the team's having an issue. Say Mr. White's having trouble with his middle school soccer team, he can call Dr. King, have him come over and work with the kids. It's been something that was very successful at Sandy Valley, Kings Kent in the past. Louisville has jumped on board. East Kent is still using him in a different capacity. So I'd like to recommend that we continue that agreement and, and re-up it for this year. And the final uh, for me is resolution M. This is our resolution authorizing the uh, sale of the Walker property. Um, as you know, in, in the resolution, I want to make sure I'm very clear on what we're authorizing here with everything. It's really three things. First of all, authorizing Mr. Knight, Mr. Schatzel, and myself to finalize the sale with the township, which we have offered 11 acres that butts up to their park for $65,000, which we believe to be approximately 80% of the, the appraised value. Um, and, and that's just a good way to be a partnership with them. Two, is to authorize us to put the remaining 14, approximately 14 acres of the property up for public auction, which again, that would be Mr. Schatzel, Mr. Knight as board president, myself. We would obviously involve Mr. Knoll as our director of operations to get that ball rolling and really get that up for sale as soon as we possibly can. Um, and then the third part of the resolution is authorizing us to work with uh, the neighbors right there. Guys, I sent this on a map, but Really, since they've owned their house, and if you went out there and looked at it, if, we always thought they owned it until things were put up there. They thought they owned it. They have a retaining wall running right through it. Um, it's to authorize us to grant a permanent easement to the neighbors uh, so that they can continue to have that property, maintain it. If there are any costs associated with that whatsoever, it would be on the family to take care of that. Uh, it would not be a cost to the district. And in talking to our attorneys, they said we do have the operation to do this because it is such a small chunk of land. It would be well under the $10,000 threshold that would require us to put it up for public sale. And we do not believe that it's going to have a, a negative impact on the selling value of what we sell and everything else. So we'd like to authorize that as well. So I would like to ask that we approve items A through F. I make a motion that we approve items A through F. Second. Uh, are there any questions? No? Call the roll, please. Mr. Hanson? Aye. Mr. Knight? Aye. Mr. Kaminsky? Aye. Mrs. Davis? Aye. All right, that brings us to informational items. Uh, board concerns, legislative, we don't have anything right now. Uh, commercial paper holding. That's uh, the very last thing in the agenda that you have in your packet. Uh, we're required to report to the board each year a list of the commercial paper. Investment sales, um, so we have a list of all of those there. If you don't know how commercial paper works, um, we buy them at the cost basis. When they mature, we get the market value of them. So if you you can do the math between the mature value and the cost basis to see what we made on each one of those investments. All right. Okay. Are 
Are there any questions pertaining to the agenda items or board action? Okay, also, I got one question. Yeah. On the appointment that has athletic coaches, is that me? The only reason I ask is Catherine says I haven't been approved. You, you are, you are on there as well. Yes, okay. that's item B. Yep. So Coach Dennison sends over a sheet, and we attach that as an agenda. I apologize. So yes, you. Yep, sorry for answering that, but yes, 100. percent You are. I normally it's supposed to start with the board. I jumped in. I'm. We were pretty sure they were going to say yes to you. So, yeah, right, we go. We're good. All right. Uh, other business. Uh, the delegate for the Capitol Conference, November 12th, 14th. 